Right, so you finished creating your masterpiece inside CapCut. You're now ready to press the magic export button. But before you do, let me show you a couple of things inside the project. So at the moment, if I was to press the export button and export, everything that's on my timeline would be exported. But let's say you only wanted a small section of the timeline to be exported, like a 10 second clip to preview what it looks like once it's exported. Well, if you right click on the empty space on the timeline, go to range and then select by clip. You can see these two tiny blue in and out markers appear at the top of the timeline. Just simply drag them into wherever it is you want them to be on the timeline. And then whatever is in between those two markers is the only thing that's going to be exported when you go to export. And then when you want to export everything that's on your timeline, just simply press cancel and now everything will be exported. Next up, did you know that you can create a YouTube thumbnail cover inside CapCut, which is exported with your video when you go to export? If you go to this little pencil slash pen button in the middle left on the timeline, and you can see on this window, you can select a still frame from whatever it is that's on your timeline, or you can upload an image from your computer. So for this, we can, well, let's select this still image. Go to edit you can add text or use one of the templates. So let's choose this one. You can change the text. Let's change it to James vlog. And of course, edit the text to however it is you want it to look. Once you're happy with it, press complete. And you can see now the pen pencil button has got the cover. If you hover over it, it sends it to the preview so you can preview it. So if you don't like it, you just go back into it and edit it. Or if you don't want it at all, just press the little bubble cross button and it will delete it off. Uh, we'll keep it on for now. Uh, and yeah, now you are ready to press the magic button and export. So let's, ooh, ah, we're greeted with this message. Now, if you are greeted with this message, it simply means that you are using some pro features, pro elements, pro transitions, pro whatever. You're using pro and you're not subscribed to the pro subscription. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't export your video it just means you can't export your video at the moment because you're using pro features. So you need to delete them off uh, or upgrade to pro. Uh, so let's say you had a 20 minute video and you used 50 pro features and you were like, oh, I can't remember what ones are pro features and what ones are not. Well, you can see this little target button at the end of the pro feature. I've only got one on the timeline at the moment. So if I press that, it takes the marker direct to that feature and then I would just delete it off. And then if you go to export now, you can see that message is gone and we're taken to the export settings window. So if you get that message, it means you need to upgrade to pro or delete the pro features that you've used off. Right, let's get into the export settings. So let's start from the top and work our way down. Uh, obviously rename it to whatever it is you want. Let's rename this to test one. Choose where you want it to be exported to. So we'll actually keep it export to my desktop for this and then video settings. So your resolution, your resolution needs to match what your clips are on the timeline. So if you've got 1080p clips, uh, then don't choose 4K because it's not gonna do anything visually to the quality. It's not gonna make it better. All it's gonna do is increase the file size. So don't think choosing 4K with 1080p clips is gonna do anything magical. It's not, it's just gonna make the file bigger. So match what's on your timeline. For me, this clip is 4K, so I'm gonna keep mine at 4K, but I'm gonna stress and say it once more. This is for me, because of this clip, I'm not saying choose 4K, I'm saying match what's on your timeline. So if it's 1080p clips, 1080p. If it's 4K, choose 4K. So we'll choose 4K for this. Uh, and then you've got bitrate. Uh, what the hell is bitrate? Uh, so bitrate basically means the amount of information that is processed per second, encoded per second. Um, and you've got three presets or you can enter a custom value. So you've got lower, recommended or higher. Now I've done various, various tests by exporting different clips with all of these presets. Uh, and I am gonna put it out there and say, I visually can't see any difference when exporting with recommended as the bit rate or higher as the bit rate. I, I can't, I visually can't. Now I've even gone to the next level and I've exported in all of these three different presets, the same clip, I've uploaded them to YouTube. I've waited for it to process. I've then watched the clips back to see if there was anything that happened during the upload process with quality, like the quality 
getting worse or whatever. And no, 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 no. There was visually no difference at all, even uploading to YouTube. So I'm going to recommend and say recommended. Uh, now, you would think choosing higher would be the best one because the highest of the high is always the best. And that's not wrong. The only reason I'm saying recommended is because the only difference I've seen in the test that I've done is the file size is bigger. The quality isn't any different. It's it's just the same. So I'm saying recommended. But if you have got loads of graphics or effects going on inside your video on the timeline, definitely, definitely, definitely choose higher. But if you don't, and it's a normal basic video, like a talking head video, like I've got right now on the timeline, I'm honestly confident in saying recommended is fine. Of course, you've got lower. And like I said, in some of the tests I've done, I, again, didn't see anything visually different, uh, visually different when choosing lower. Uh, but there's something psychological in my head where it just doesn't feel right choosing lower. Like I just can't choose something low, like, or lower, like, no. So the middle sweet spot for me is recommended. Uh, so I'm going to say to you, I'm recommending you choose recommended because it keeps the file size balanced. Uh, and it doesn't like shoot it up. I mean, it doesn't shoot it up crazy when you choose higher. Obviously it depends on how how long your timeline is. Uh, but for me today, recommended is 35 megabytes and higher is 44 megabytes. So it's not a massive difference, but this is only a 10 second, whatever it is clip. So if you had like a 20 minute, 20 minute video, 20 minute timeline, it's going to be a different story. So let me summarize this with the bitrate, And I'm actually going to export in recommended and higher and show you examples visually there's no difference in a minute, uh, so hold fire. But if you've got loads of effects and graphics and things like that going on in your video, choose higher as the bitrate. If you don't, and it's just a normal video, like with none of that going on, choose recommended. Now, if you want, then you could do what I showed you at the beginning and do the in and out points and export like a 20 second bit of your video with the different bit rates to see if you can see any difference. I personally can't. And like I said, I've even gone to the next level and uploaded those clips to YouTube to see if anything was lost in the upload process and there wasn't. So that's my findings. That is literally my findings. So we're going to export uh, two clips, like I said. Uh, and first of all, we'll export with recommended as the bit rate. Under that, you've got codec. The uh, recommended preferred codec uh, to upload to YouTube is H.264. So keep it at H.264. And then you've got format. The preferred format for YouTube is MP4. So keep it at MP4. And then you've got frame rate. This needs to match what clips, what the clips are on your timeline. So if they're 25 frame, if they're 25 frames per second clips, then this needs to be 25 frames per second for your export. Um, everything needs to match. So remember in your project, you've also got your project settings that has an option to choose frame rate as well. If we get out of this, I'll show you. Uh, so in the details panel up here, if you go to modify, this is your project settings. So you can see mine matches 25 as well. If if you have your clips as one frame rate and you export in another frame rate, there's the risk of it being glitchy and like having dropped frames and all of that stuff. So you just need to make sure everything matches. Um, so yeah, mine is 25. So I'm going to keep it at 25. Under that, you've got audio. So checking audio or leaving it unchecked doesn't mean that if you leave it unchecked, your video is going to be muted and silent. No. If you check it, what's going to happen is alongside your video file, you're going to export the audio file from your video as well as an MP3 or a WAV, whatever format you choose, which I think is pretty cool. So you have that alongside it if you want it, of course. If you don't want it, then just uncheck it and your video will just have the audio in it as normal. It won't be silent. So for this test, because obviously we're going to export two different videos, let's check audio so you can see uh, what I mean. So we'll get an audio file exported with a video file. Um, under that, you've got captions. It's a pro feature. If you had captions on your timeline, you could choose to export them as a text file. Uh, obviously, I don't, uh, which is why it's grayed out. Uh, so we'll leave that for now. Then check copyright is a TikTok 
thing. It's nothing to do with YouTube, so just leave that for now. And then if we go back up to the top, you can see our thumbnail cover is here in the preview window. Under that, you've got this uh, add video cover at the beginning and you can check the box or not. Now, what this is gonna do is if you check the box, it's simply gonna do what it says on the tin. It's gonna add the cover to the beginning of the video. It's a very, like the duration is like less than a second. You, again, I'm gonna show you an example, you'll see. Um, it doesn't stay on the screen for long, but I mean, you might want it. Personally, I don't know anywhere where I would want to use this feature and turn it on, but you might, we'll leave it on so I can show you an example. Uh, but either way, if you check the box or not, if you don't check the box, you will still get your thumbnail exported with, when you export the video, which you'll see in a minute. So let's leave this checked for now. Uh, and let's change this back to test one, because obviously we exited out of this window so it deleted the, the name and let's make sure we got the bitrate at recommended yeah cool and then at the bottom you've got your duration and the file size everything is done press the magic button and let it do its thing and done right and then it plays a preview up there it converts it to a vertical video for tiktok down there which is a pro feature you can share it straight to youtube but i think most of the time you'd want to upload things manually so yeah we'll come out of this but we'll open folder and we'll close that window. So let's go to the folder. So you can see it hasn't just exported the video file. It's exported a whole folder because we've got the cover in it and we've got the MP3 audio file in it. And then of course you've got the video. So if we didn't check the audio box, we wouldn't have the audio, but because we've edited a cover, no matter what, even if we check that box or not, it's always going to export a cover. If you don't want it to export the cover, then you just need to delete the cover off. Right. So let's open the video file and you can see the cover appears at the beginning. And when I press play, you'll see it goes away pretty much straight away. But if you was to drag this video clip into the timeline, you would see that it plays for like a zero point whatever seconds at the beginning. Uh, so if you didn't want that, you would actually need to trim it. Right, this is with the bitrate at recommended. Are you ready? Let's do this. If you're a regular viewer to the channel, then it will be no surprise to you that come rain or shine, wind or snow, night or day, inside or outside, sun or moon. Cool, so let's now go back to CapCut and go to export and change the bitrate to higher. Let's keep everything the same. Uh, let's change the name to test two. Let's uncheck add video cover to the beginning and let's uncheck audio. So everything else is going to stay the same. The only difference is the bit rate is higher and let's export and done. Right. Let's stop that. Cancel that. Go back to our folder and there we've got test two. Now inside test two, you can see we've only got two files. So we've got the cover and the video because we unchecked audio, so there's no audio file. But like I said, the video won't be a silent video. It's still gonna have the audio in it. So let's watch this. This is, uh, oh, and you can see as well that the video cover is now not at the beginning like it was in test one. This is with the bit rate at higher. Let's do this. If you're a regular viewer to the channel, then it will be no surprise to you that come rain or shine, wind or snow, night or day, inside or outside, sun or moon. Yeah, so I personally cannot see any difference visually with those two clips that we've exported between recommended and higher. So let me summarize. If you've got loads of effects and graphics going on, I would recommend you choosing higher. If you don't, I'm, I'm confident in saying recommended is fine. Uh, and I've done various different tests, like I said. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So those are the, well, those are my recommended export settings from CapCut for YouTube.